from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Online. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's virtual coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit Online Virtual. Obviously we are here in the Palo Alto studios. I'm your host, John Furrier with theCUBE, with the quarantine crew. We've got a great guest, CUBE alumni, Shannon Kellogg, Vice President of Amazon Web Services, AWS Public Policy. Shannon, great to see you. Hey John, it's great to be back. I, I do feel like I'm a bona fide alumnus of the, the Cube, so thanks for having me. It's always great to have you on. You know, we've had many kind of conversations about policy and modernization of government. That's been the big trend, kind of wave in your world. Now with COVID-19, you cannot ignore this. This was no longer an adjunct to physical spaces or physical realities. This reality is about virtualization of, of, of data, workloads, work, workforces, workplaces, workloads, workflows, you name it, it's impacted. And certainly this is a tough time for everyone to do work. More importantly, it shows all the problems with modernization, people who aren't modern are really suffering. So I want to get your thoughts about as we go through this pandemic and look at stabilizing and coming out of it, there's a lot of reinvention and a lot of growth strategies that are changing in real time. So I want to get your thoughts on that real quick. Yeah. Well, John, uh, we've seen more innovation uh, and uh, migration to the cloud in the last few months than we have over the last few years. And, you know, things have been steady the last few years. You know, you've seen organizations continually migrate to cloud and AWS, but organizations now are accelerating. Uh, we're seeing it at every level of government. We're seeing it in the education sector. We're seeing it, of course, in healthcare. Uh, and so organizations are trying to transform fast. One of the first problem sets that we were tackling in the early days of the COVID-19 response was to work with states here in the U.S. as they were trying to set up their unemployment um, response efforts and uh, their, um, uh, you know, un their unemployment insurance uh, portals and places where citizens could go in and apply for those benefits. And you had a lot of states that were dealing with some very um, old legacy systems that had to move quickly. And we, uh, you know, partnered with many of them and, and, and several of our uh, providers, uh, service providers uh, to get them set up fast. And so that was one of the first um, uh, things that we saw, you know, during the early stages of COVID-19. One of the big memes going around the internet obviously the past couple of months is, you know, the cliche of digital transformation um, or directional mission. And then just being accelerated by COVID kind of like a, a, a blah, uh, you know, a wrecking ball kind of hitting that digital transformation theme, really kind of exposing people to the reality of it has to happen faster. And I want to get your thoughts on this because you published an opt-ed piece today around the COVID-19 response on how the federal government should respond to this. And it's titled Rethinking Government Services in the Wake of COVID-19. Uh, you really make some strong points there and I want to get your thoughts on that. Can you just give a quick highlights of the key thoughts on that opt-ed? What are you trying to say there? What's the positioning? What's the message? Yeah, well, as I mentioned, uh, governments at every level um, have already started uh, to accelerate their digital transformation efforts. And one of the things that I was trying to really emphasize in, in the op-ed today was that there is an opportunity to continue to do that, certainly in the federal government, but also at state and local levels. Uh, and, um, you know, there have to be uh, some uh, investment uh, in order to continue to enable that transformation. And there has to be continued leadership and focus on it. And um, of course it doesn't uh, end just with government digital transformation. Uh, we're seeing it in the education sector, we're seeing it in the healthcare sector. Uh, and so uh, what I am trying to emphasize now is that we've come a long way, even in a few months, in helping organizations through this transformation, provide better citizen services, provide emergency uh, response efforts, including, uh, you know, as I mentioned at the state level, getting these unemployment insurance portals set up fast in the um, virtual call centers organized around those. Uh, and certainly at the federal government, we've seen some large scale 
programs rolled out without uh, cloud computing um, that would not have been successful in several cases. Uh, when you think about the uh, billions of dollars and really trillions of dollars that's rolled out through these um, uh, federal uh, government uh, relief efforts, uh, IT has been a very important part of that. And so now we need to continue to move forward and accelerate this digital transformation across the board. It, we owe it, quite frankly, to citizens. Uh, and um, you know, I think that there are a lot of lessons learned that we can draw from COVID-19 responses. So are you making a case for Congress to allocate money for modernization of these IT services? Yeah, the good news is, John, is that Congress uh, for years in a bipartisan way has been supporting federal IT modernization. And now they have an opportunity, especially as you look at um, what's happening out at the states. And again, thinking about how some of these old legacy systems really uh, delayed or hurt um, some of the COVID-19 response efforts, the states need funding in order to modernize some of these systems. And of course, not every federal agency has the funding that they need either. And there's an opportunity for Congress also uh, to provide uh, some of that funding. I saw that you um, spoke with my colleague, uh, Matt Cornelius over at the Alliance for Digital Innovation and talked a lot about um, the Modernizing Technology Fund and some of those efforts and how important it is for Congress in a bipartisan way to make sure that the IT modernization in federal agencies fully funded. And I support that. And I know that many other, uh, not only companies, but trade associations like the Alliance for Digital Innovation do as well. And, the modern um, and then I'm happy to talk about upskilling, of course, which is an important part of uh, digital transformation. Well, I mean, you look at the, look at the inadequacy <laughs> of the systems. They're antiquated, they're old. Um, you got unemployment. That's just new jobs that need to be filled. Reskilling of existing jobs because the cloud is part of it. Um, and then just the local economy is going to be impacted. Just online education, new roles and new responsibilities. So I, I got to ask you with, with what you're seeing, what are the lessons have you learned that can keep up the momentum in the government? Because obviously this is an accelerant, this pandemic. What lessons? Yeah, in addition to what I was saying earlier on the funding side, having a focus on uh, training and upskilling and reskilling is really critical. Um, we have a lot of workforce development programs uh, here at Amazon and AWS uh, that we're rolling out and providing uh, support for our public uh, sector uh, customers and colleagues. Uh, we're also doing a lot um, in terms of uh, helping um, various parts of uh, the population uh, retrain and get involved in the digital economy. Uh, one of the, um, I think, really great examples of how we've been doing that for several years are the military assistance programs that we have been involved in. We're, um, we're working uh, with partners, community college level, four-year education institutions uh, to uh, provide um, training and certification uh, for uh, workers that are coming out of uh, the, the military and or their spouses. Uh, that's something that we've uh, worked uh, both, uh, again, at the community college level, but even have uh, partnered with the federal government and the Department of Labor in some of those programs. And we have to continue to do that, we and others, uh, to accelerate what we're doing in terms of uh, the workforce development effort um, uh, you know, across uh, every level of government, quite frankly. You know, I've been doing a lot of virtual cube, virtual events, covering them, building software for them. Um, and then there's this big focus on the remote workers, work from home. I get that, that's an IT kind of paradigm. Companies have a focus of their workers, but also there's a remote customer, a remote prospect or remote user. So the stakeholders of all these systems now are exposed and the, it's pretty obvious who's winning and who's got a good solution. So I got to ask you, uh, what's the learnings are you, are, you're seeing over the past few months around this remote worker or remote consumer? Because people have to do their jobs, but they also have suppliers. And again, this is back to the, how the internet has evolved the ecosystem of partners and companies and, and stakeholders. There's a lot of learnings here. What would you, what would you share in the past couple of months? Well, John, it's probably obvious to you that uh, COVID-19 has transformed uh, how people are working, obviously. And that's no different here at Amazon. Uh, uh, many of us are, are working remotely and have been for, for several months. Certainly we're seeing 
um, a huge transformation in the public sector uh, around uh, remote work. The federal government, as you know, for years has had um, initiatives around telework. Uh, champions uh, like Jerry Connolly, a U.S. representative from Virginia, uh, have been very focused on trying to move the federal government in that direction. And thank goodness, because I think if, if those efforts weren't already in place, uh, you would not have seen um, as many people be able to work from home as fast as they did uh, during COVID-19. But still, there's a lot more work to do in our federal agencies to adopt telework and um, uh, remote working. Uh, we're seeing that at the state level. We're seeing that in educational institutions. There's a ton more work there to do. And, um, you know, I think there's an opportunity uh, to uh, continue through these digital transformation efforts, enabling remote work and telework. Uh, but we also have to have bipartisan collaboration uh, to continue to push forward uh, th those efforts at the uh, federal level. You know, it's interesting, and I want to get your reaction because you're a veteran, not only of the technology, but also policy. And as I was saying earlier on an interview I was doing um, this morning around your event is that on the commercial side, we saw Amazon. I mean, obviously the history of Amazon developers IT, enterprise, commercial, and now public sector, it's the same movie. Inadequate old systems need to be modernized, cloud certainly helping there. But if you look at the, look at the flywheel of Amazon, you got infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and SaaS. A lot of people in the public sector are laying down the foundational things around infrastructure, getting an auditing um, compliance system that's agile, and then building a platform on top for a new workload. So I got to get your reaction to the three things that we're seeing changing technology, changing economics, and changing expectations and experiences that are happening right now at an accelerated level. All three of those theaters are exploding and change. What's your thoughts and reaction? Well, one of the things that I've seen over the years as um, you, know, you saw first movers in the cloud and you saw organizations adopt these technologies is that sometimes uh, you know, when you look at federal workers, for example, or you even look across the public sector, people were a little um, apprehensive sometimes in adopting these new technologies and practices because uh, they, um, you know, were adverse to risk or felt that if they did, uh, you know, serve as a first mover, do something bold, that it might come back to potentially, um, uh, you know, hurt them in some way in terms of the risk that they took if something went wrong. And so now over the last several months, I've seen that apprehension in every organization that we're working with um, basically not be there because people recognize that they have to move now, move quickly and uh, adopt these new technologies, adopt these new practices in order to do their jobs to provide, if you're in government, the right services to your citizens and to the people who need those services. If you're in the private sector, to move faster, to be able to provide more services more quickly to your customers. I mean, think about a company like ours where we had to you know, scale up very, very fast. We were already scaling rapidly, but we had to scale even more rapidly. Uh, and, and so it's really, really important, I think, that you know, we draw on these lessons over the last few months, especially in relation to the public sector, where it's okay to take a risk, it's okay to adopt new technologies and practices, and it's okay to move fast because you know what? In a situation like COVID-19, um, sometimes you're going to have to move very, very quickly to that remote working environment, or you're going to have to move very quickly to set up a um, you know, a digital uh, or a virtual call center in order to provide basic services that people need to survive. And so it's just a really interesting um, transformation that I'm seeing out there. Yeah, and what's interesting, I'll just share some commentary from myself and I want to get your reaction to that is that, you know, in the hundreds of people that I've talked to in the DC area uh, covering public sector over the past many years uh, is, has been this younger audience and this younger workforce. And then now look at the pandemic and you look at the impact on education, unemployment in the citizenship of the, in the communities, not just state, but local, you're seeing an uprising. You're seeing a silent revolution from the younger constituents who are saying, you know, hey, I don't care what it takes, just go faster, support me, 
deliver the kind of service, be agile. I mean, they're kind of speaking DevOps in their own way. So a silent revolution is happening. And I want to get your thoughts, because I know you and I have talked about this briefly and I use the word silent revolution, but people of a younger generation are like, what are you talking about? Manuals, like shipping old procurement methods. What's the problem? What's the blocker? Why is that there? There's really no answer to that. So I want to get your thoughts to that. Cause this is something that we're seeing again, this silent revolution is emerging in this IT modernization, the government, because people want, expect faster services. They're unemployed. Yeah, they I would want almost education. call it more of a startup mentality. And I, you know, I don't think it's uh, even age restrictive. You know, every um, organization that we're working with, we have workers at every in every age group, and you know, we're seeing people just shift to this mentality of, okay, I need this service now. I need to move faster. Uh, and, you know, we have to get access to this remotely in order to do this or to do that. And so to me, it's not, you know, necessarily um, just in a certain part of our population. And it's everybody is starting to think that way in every organization uh, that we're working with. And they're throwing out some of the, you know, just some of the um, uh, old uh, practices or old way of thinking. I mean, I can't tell you how many state officials I've had call me uh, during this uh, COVID-19 response who were asking for help. Like, we've got to do this now. How can we get your help to do this now? And, and to me, that's just, you know, that startup mentality, like we've got to figure this out, uh, no matter uh, if our procurement practices aren't where they should be or our systems aren't where they should be, we have to figure this out. And to me, that's sort of a startup mentality, a you know, transformational approach that we're seeing across the board. I would, I would agree with you. I also add that a lot of people want to have a mission and they want to get involved in public service and see a way to contribute. So I see an inward migra in, inbound migration for people getting involved to solve some of these public uh, sector problems because it's a societal impact. And I think you're going to start to see people realizing that they can just, they can protest, but they can vote, but they also get involved. And I think you're going to see developers, I think it's going to be a tsunami of of new creative workloads or applications coming quickly. I think that's going to be very interesting. Yeah, to see. John, I I couldn't agree more. I think I think um, you know we're seeing uh, transformation not just in the public sector and how services are providing are, are provided, but also in our economy and how we interact with people and how we socialize and you know it's just a um, a complete transformation in different way of thinking and organizations and individuals are out there creating right now, much of it in the cloud, trying to figure out how to innovate, trying to figure out how uh, you know, to come up with new business models and approaches. And so it's, it's very exciting you know, to see uh, some of that um, pulse that's out there uh, and to talk to people as they're thinking about new ways to do things. Um, you know, it's, it's unfortunately very tragic uh, given you know, the circumstances around COVID-19 but when you know things get difficult like this, and people, um, you know, face uh, 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 challenges uh, like this, um, you know, they tend to, and we all tend to figure out how we can help, how we can maybe think differently, how we can uh, help with uh, transformation. And we're certainly seeing that in the public sector and through some of these digital transformation efforts. But to your point, we're also yeah. seeing it in the private sector. What's great about a free economy is people can solve problems together. And that's one of the best things about America and the free states and nations out there. So I, I want to shift a little bit because I know this is uh, uh, something that's close to you, your heart as well as mine. Um, you wrote a blog post uh, this past year, earlier in the year, so we're supporting veterans to get into STEM programs. Um, how are you thinking about that and getting them back into the workforce, uh, certainly um, for and after the pandemic? Yeah, we're really passionate about this area, John. I'm glad you asked. Um, I mentioned a little bit before some of the training that we're doing uh, with um, uh, colleges and universities and even directly with the government uh, for um, uh, you know military members that are transferring out or, or uh, folks that are already veterans and or their spouses. You know, it's also important to remember the families uh, who uh, have been there right at the side uh, of our veterans uh, and uh, those that are service, uh, uh, providing service uh, in the military for the country. And so we're super passionate about that. Um, 
at every level of Amazon and every level of certainly of AWS. Uh, we have a lot of programs across Amazon to hire veterans, to train veterans, including in uh, both basic uh, skills as well as advanced uh, cloud skills. Uh, and um, we're, we're super excited about all of those programs. I mentioned many of those uh, in the blog post that you're referring to, and I would encourage uh, folks to, to look on our AWS public sector blog for more information on those efforts. Uh, we're constantly up, updating um, and uh, providing more insight in how uh, those programs are being conducted. Well, Shannon, one of the things that's interesting and, and just to kind of close out our, our chat here uh, is sustainability because you look at the carbon footprint, not a lot of cars on the road and you're seeing, you seeing people being happy about that, but this points to what technology can do to help sustainability. You guys had some announcements here at the, su the summit. Um, can you share highlights on that? Yeah, so we have lots uh, going on uh, in sustainability across Amazon. Um, Amazon Web Services or AWS has been a big part of that. Uh, we have a long-term goal of, of uh, being 100% renewable uh, and uh, eventually uh, carbon, uh, carbon neutral. Our initial renewable uh, energy goal uh, is uh, in 2025. Uh, so we've been, um, you know, uh, enabling uh, the availability of a lot more uh, utility scale renewable energy as part of that effort just across the river in Virginia. Uh, we have multiple uh, solar projects uh, that we've um, uh, been putting in place and, and um, uh, backing financially now for several years as part of that effort. Uh, and we're doing that across the country as well as across the world. Uh, and that's something that we believe very strongly in. And, uh, you know, the company Amazon just announced uh, a $2 billion uh, climate uh, fund uh, last week that focuses on uh, startups and, and uh, technology, uh, new technologies and new companies in this space. And that is also something that we're very proud of. So we, uh, believe um, very strongly about this area. Uh, I've, um, you know, been involved for a number of years uh, in uh, sustainability efforts uh, in the in the company, and uh, in particular in AWS. And I have the pleasure of also serving on the American Council for Renewable Energy, which is one of the uh, leading uh, nonprofits uh, and um, uh, organizations in this space. And there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of momentum. Uh, for um, you know, uh, renewable energy, and even uh, with some of the challenges around COVID-19 and the economic challenges, that industry is is moving forward. And you know, we as a company are very, very committed uh, to enabling more renewable energy to be available, including right across the river in Virginia. Well, Shannon, you got your hands full as the vice president of AWS Public Policy in DC. Not only do we have the pandemic, we just got the sea change of massive innovation coming with digital. I know you got the, the world down there evolving very quickly. Congratulations and you know, stay with it and keep, uh, keep plugging away for that innovation strategy. Appreciate it. John, we appreciate it. Thanks so much uh, for including me and, and uh, AWS on theCUBE again during the Public Sector Summit. My pleasure. Always good to see you. My pleasure. Always great. Societal change is coming, real impact. This is with focus. Digital technology is going to make a difference, change the economics, change the experiences and outcomes for uh, public services, public and societal change. Kellogg, Shannon Kellogg, Vice President of AWS Public Policy here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.